peace, love, and obedience always to the Most High God. Now, Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. Who is it? It is Israel. Now, just consider this before you go take off and flee and go do something else. Just try to understand that Yah is requiring a guilt offering for our sins against him and for our forefathers. Right? So let's read. Isaiah chapter 53 reads, verse 10. But Yah chose to crush him, Israel, by disease that if he, Israel, made himself an offering for guilt, he, Israel, might see offspring, children, and have long life, and that through him, Israel, Yah's purpose might prosper. Now, Israel is the lamp, the light unto all nations, and Israel must magnify the law, you know. So once Israel gets back in order with Yah, and Yah delivers Israel, then we, then we will be able to magnify the law unto all nations so they can see the purpose of Yah creating us to be his. You know, because through Yah's law, we have balance, clarity, integrity, truthfulness, righteousness, right? Through Yah's law, which this world has none of today. <laughs> okay, but when you check this out in Isaiah 53, verse 10, the key word is, if Israel made himself an offering for guilt, if because a lot of us are still struggling with this. Like, we don't understand what we need to do. You know, we don't understand what return unto Yah means once we bethink ourselves in the land of our captivity. And we understand that the blessings was given to our forefathers and the curses was handed over to us. And we're going through it right now. And then Yah says, once we think about that and Yah has revived us, you know, like he said he would in Hosea chapter 6 verses 1 through 2 you know Yah has revived us you know after 2500 years and we are now awakening to know that we're Israel and we are returning but we don't know what to do once we return we go strictly to the law so like we got to keep these laws so we can get up out of here because a lot of us misunderstand Isaiah chapter 49 and the lawful captive shall be delivered lawful captive just mean uh, a captivity that's deserving of punishment it's righteous it's a righteous captivity unto people who have been disobeying the most high and deserving of a punishment and yah has put an enemy upon us to punish us as we should understand through the curses of deuteronomy right but israel must give a guilt offering unto yah but we can't do that without a temple right and without the priesthood or the high priest. So we're going to go right here. Now, what is a guilt offering? And how can we make it without a temple and no high priest? Now, this is how. By remembering Hosea chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Now, in the Tanakh is verses 2 and 3, if you read from the Tanakh. And this is what it will read. Hosea chapter 14, verse 2 through 3. Return. See, this is it right here. See how it says in... In that Deuteronomy chapter 31 through 3, it's saying once Israel return. Now, this is how Israel must return. Israel, then it says, return, O Israel, to Yah, your El, for you have fallen because of your sin. That's why we are in this predicament, right? Take words with you and return to Yah and say to him, Forgive all guilt and accept what is good. And instead of bulls, rams, you know, instead of bulls, we will pay the offering of our lips. So through prayer, through prayer is how we return to Yah right now and give our guilt offering. Have a contrite spirit, a contrite heart. That means Apologetic 
ask for forgiveness because the guilt is upon us. Remember, we inherited the curses for it was our forefathers fault who turned from Yah. Literally, the king at the time and the high priest and the priest had turned from Yah, which caused the people to turn from Yah. Now, that's Lamentations chapter 2, starting at verse 6. Now, you go there, you will see that the king and the priest, they turn from Yah. And who was the king and the priest? They are the ones who govern the people, who the people come to, to hear the word of the law, to be governed and directed how to live daily. Right? So, if, the, so if Yah's entity, who he works through, which is the king and the priest, turn from him. Then naturally the people going to turn from him. And that's what happened. So right now while we in this predicament. In this situation. We must return to Yah. As a nation. See if we don't see Isaiah 53 as Israel. And we seeing it as a singular person. An idol like JC. Or Jesus. You know if you want to call him by his name. <laughs> or Yahweh Shai Yahshua. Or even this seed of David. If you want to just single it out and look at it like that. Like this one person is the guilt offering or shall make it. Then Israel will not humble themselves before Yah. So Yah can perform his word and deliver us like he said. Now I believe we're about to get into that right now shortly. But I'm going to go ahead and get into what's a guilt offering. Then you go into Leviticus chapter 5 verse 14. When a person commits a trespass being unwittingly remiss about any of Yah's sacred things, he shall bring as his penalty to Yah a ram without blemish from the flock, convertible into payment in silver by sanctuary weight as a guilt offering. Now you see how it says bring a ram without blemish. This is why in that Hosea it says that we won't give a bull or a ram for offering because we don't have the temple set up right now. But here in Leviticus, you know, speaking a temple, well, should I say the priesthood and the altar is set up, right? And there's a high priest to give this offering unto Yah for our guilt. But we don't have that now because Yah, taken, Yah has taken all that away. So all we have is our prayers to give so that's a guilt offering nowadays our prayers as a whole Israel we have to give a guilt offering unto Yah then like I stated right here see without the priesthood and temple this can't be kept that's why Hosea chapter 14 223 was said <laughs> now how does all this tie into a guilt offering we must present to Yah now remember Leviticus chapter 26 this is the guilt that we must present unto Yah. This is, this is why we must see Isaiah 53 as Israel. So then when we get to Leviticus 26, we shall understand that this is the guilt that we must present to Yah and give this offering from our lips so Yah can perform this thing. Check it out. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40. And they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers. In that they trespass against me, yea, were hostile to me, when I in turn have been hostile to them, and have removed them into the land of their enemies. Then at last shall their obdurate heart humble themselves, right? We shall pretty much our prideful, stern, arrogant heart humble ourselves before Yah. And they shall atone for their iniquity. The only way we can atone right now is through prayers, our guilt offering. We, we must do this as a nation. Atone for their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Yaakov. I will remember also my covenant with Isaac. Or, or yeah, this is Isaac. <laughs> and also my covenant with Abraham. And I will remember the land. For the land shall be forsaken of them. See? Making up for its Sabbath years by being desolate of them. While, while they atone for their iniquity. For the abundant reasons that they reject, rejected my rules and spurned my laws. Yet even then, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject, I will not reject them or spurn them, so as to destroy them, annulling, right, Avo avoiding my covenant with them. For I, Yah, am their 
L. These are the laws, rules, and instructions that Yah established through Moses on Mount Sinai between himself and the Israelite people. See, this is the guilt offering we must offer before Yah. We must speak this here in this captivity where we are right now so Yah can deliver us. It's very important that we get on one accord with this. Turn from idolatry as, as much as we can. And at least see Isaiah 53 as Israel. And then put it together with Leviticus and all these other things that's correlated. So Yah can act. But only a remnant would do this. And Yah will speak that. He would do this for the remnant during that time. So for those who may be weary and feeling like this is impossible. Yah understands that not all is not going to turn to him and do this. But Yah is going to do it for the remnant's sake and also really for his name's sake. Because we have been blaspheming his name, making him, making Yah's name look foolish among the heathens. So don't be weary. Yah is going to deliver for our sake. You know, he's going to have mercy for the remnant's sake and for his holy name. Now, I know I have a side note here. See, this is the guilt offering we must present before Yah. Oops, I got to fix that. <laughs> Should I fix it now? Yeah, let me fix it now. Need that to it. Mm, punctual stuff. I don't have to be too punctual right now. Okay, see, this is the guilt offering we must present before Yah in order to be delivered from this captivity. In haste, the more we humble ourselves, the remnant, see, who was reserved for Yah, for not all of us is going to consider this. Now, this is the description of Israel, the remnant who will consider. The remnant who fulfills Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth like a sheep being led to slaughter, like an ewe dumb before those who shear her. He did not open his mouth. Isaiah 53, verse 9. And his grave was set among the wicked. And with the rich in his death, though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood for this remnant and these and this people will not speak falsely. Like these words I'm speaking right now, this is not false. This is straight from the Most High's mouth, put together in perspective, correlated through the scriptures. This is not falsehood. And there's plenty of us speaking like this, saying that Isaiah 53 is Israel. But... This is what I got from this part right here, where it says, and his grave was set among the wicked. You know, like like the wicked is going to take the place of the remnant of Israel's grave and with the rich in his death. Like the pride, the proud, the arrogant is going to take the uh, replacement in death instead of the remnant of Israel who is, who have done no injustice and spoken no falsehood why do i say that because we're going to get to a particular part where it's going to break it down i don't think i put it in this segment right here so i'm going to just go to the picture photo right after that you know what i'm going to do it right now this is also the description of israel See, I have it right here. Boom. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 12 through 13. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of Yah, the remnant of Israel. Shall what? Do, shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So this remnant shall be fearless. And you see how the correlation in that Isaiah 53, how it speaks about, no, there was no injustice and there's no falsehood like that came from their mouth. This is them, because we are, we are in the midst, like we are in the midst of the right. And we are, the, we are in the midst of this captivity. And we are being afflicted, aren't we? But we shall trust in Yah. 
Trust in the name of Yah. That's why it's so important that we have one name for Yah. But that's not here. It's not time for that now. For Yah hasn't made his name one yet. But this is why they did that with so many names. Because it's important for this remnant to know the name of Yah. Trust in it. Right? And they shall not speak deceitful things. Not have a deceitful tongue. Nor speak lies. But they shall not be afraid to speak and get this out. For Yah shall deliver. Now that's connecting Right, the description of Israel, the remnant who will consider from that Zephaniah to this Isaiah 53, 7 and Isaiah 53, 9, putting it together. Now this is very important. Israel, we must come together and unify so we can remove the guilt off of us and for Yah to move quick in haste for his servant and remnant's sake. Remember, I was just talking about that. This is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. And for Yah to bring us back home. I need to put that in there. Uh, for a servant's sake. And to bring us. Let me put that. Let me correct that right there. And to bring us back home. <laughs> Got to be punctual, right? All right. Isaiah 60. This is very key. And when we get to verse 22. This is where I'm talking about Yah moving in haste for us during this time. But for the sake of, you know, for the for the love and the loyalty unto Yah and respect, I'm going to read the whole thing. Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your light has come and Yah's glory has risen on you, Israel. For behold, darkness will cover the earth and thick darkness the people. But Yah, not Lord, <laughs> and let's fix that. Mm hmm. Let's go. Let's see. Quick little fix. But Yah will arise on you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Nations will come to your light. All right, we're going to get to that. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising are awakening, right? Lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters will be carried in, in arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, bright, beautiful. And your heart will thrill, be joyful and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The abundance of all things. Like in the curses it says, you know, Yah kicked us out of our land and cursed us because we didn't want to serve Yah for the abundance of all things, but this remnant, we will be joyful in that and appreciative, and we will love the abundance of all things from Yah once Yah return and deliver us. Okay, let me see the more was I at radiant. Okay, because the abundance of the seed will return to you, the wealth of the nations will come to you. Ooh, a multitude of camels will cover you. The drum, the, the dromedaries. <laughs> Pretty sure you guys know how to pronounce that better than me. Of Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and will proclaim the praises of Yah. All the flocks of Kedar will be gathered together to you. The rams and the both will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. And I will beautify my glorious house. Right. The house of Israel. And temple shall be built that house see this is talking about us going back right and then I love when we get to this part this is us in captivity this is how we going back see we're going back like this we're going back the same way we came we came over on ships we're going back on ships we you know, we were brought over here by our enemies, but in the same way how Yah delivered us from Egypt the first time, he was but he was before us right there. That's the same way how we're going back. Same way how we're going back. Because that's what Yah did before. And that's in correlation to Micah chapter seven. How Yah says it would be like the coming out of Egypt when we return. So this is why things look similar here. This look like Modern day Egypt, you know, similar things, 
uh, you know, the plagues, uh, the pharaohs set up, right? You see what's going on, the affliction, <laughs> the curses, the punishment. It's similar to old Egypt, but it's not Egypt. That's why you got that pyramid on the back of the dollar symbolizing that it's similar to old Egypt because America, which is a corporation, not a country, was created in the images of pretty much every captivity we went into. Egypt, Babylon, even have sort of Gomorrah type vibe here with all the LGBTQ, UZ, whatever, a community, right? All of that. Just think about all the wickedness that we witness is here, you know, but beautiful Yah is going to deliver us in a fashion to where it will feel similar to us. And we get that feel of our forefathers coming out of um, captivity. Now, let's go ahead and go down. Um, where did I stop off at? A glorious house. Okay, then it says, who are these who fly as a cloud? Israel. And as a dove to their windows. You know, a dove flies back home to his window, right? He always leaves, but he returns, right? This is the correct translation. It's not that we're going to leave on an airplane. It is, you know, who are these that fly as a cloud? The beautiful, the beautiful uh, metaphor, metaphorically speaking, yeah, compares us to a dove flying. Just, just, just picture us, just beautiful flying back home to our nest, right? Or back to our window, you know. Who are these who fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the islands will the, the islands will wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring your sons from far away. Right? Their silver, their silver and their gold with them. For the name of Yeah, I missed a couple of spots when I was writing this. It's okay. Fix it with you. See, we doing this together, y'all. And for the name of Yah. Your God and for the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified you. Foreigners, nations, right, will build your walls and their kings will serve you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. This is why it's so important for us to give Yah that guilt offering so he can come and deliver. Come on, remnant. Come on. You know? And it says, for that nation... And kingdom that will not serve you shall perish, right? Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you. The cypress tree, the pine, the box tree together to beautify this place of my sanctuary, the temple, right? And I will make this, make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you will come bowing to you. And all those who despise you will bow themselves at the soles of your feet. So you brothers who have in these Gentile nations bowing before you on these corners, it ain't time for none of that. Yeah, and that ain't what Yah mean. Yah is talking about when he made us beautiful. We out here still, we, we out here still full of dross. We ain't, we, we not refined yet. Yah hasn't made us into pure silver, true, like beautiful ornaments, like looking like beautiful gold, like beautiful jewel pieces before the nations we still out here dirty and trash and you got people kissing your feet just because you woke up to know that you Israel but you in idolatry and you doing some wickedness and cursing on the corners that's not beautiful so this is not time for that yet yeah, this is a time for that beautiful remnant who Yah brings back with that contrite heart who gave their guilt offering unto him and Yah was pleased with that he would do this thing for them not us dirty folks out here being like that. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. Um, bow themselves down at the sole of your feet. They will call you. They will call you Yah City. Yah Jerusalem, right? So this is talking about. Because this is, this is the bloodline of Jerusalem right here. Is being treated like that for the southern kingdom. The bloodline of Jerusalem. Which is the seed of David's sons and daughters. The seed of Lewites sons and daughters. The seed of Zadok which comes from Lewite sons and daughters. Right? The seed of Benjamin. The seed of Yahuda, Which make up the bloodline of Jerusalem. This is why they're going to be bound to that feet. Because that's a royal bloodline right there. A bloodline who Yah. This entity who Yah uses to govern the people. 
to be chief leaders to the people. This is why they're going to be acting like that. And they will call you Yah City because Yah is bringing back Jerusalem, the people, these bloodlines, to sit in their lot and to be a lamp and a light unto the people, the nations. Oh, yeah. Then it says, the, um, they will call you Yah City, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> the upright of the Holy One of Israel. Where areas you have been forsaken and hated, so that none pass through you, I will make you an eternal ex excellency, a joy of many generations. You will also drink the milk of nations and will, and will nurse from the royal breast or, no, or nurse from royal breast. Then you will know that I, Yah, am your savior, your redeemer, the mighty one of your code. For bronze, I will bring gold. For iron, I will bring silver. For wood, bronze. And for stones, iron. I will also make peace your governor. We need it, Yah. In righteousness, your ruler. We need it, Yah. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, nor desolation or destruction within your borders. But you will call, but you will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon give light to you. But Yah will be your everlasting light. Not saying that Yah took away the covenant of the moon and the sun or the stars. It's just Yah is now going to be before us forever our light. That we will not do wickedness and we shall live in righteousness. Fulfilling Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. To where Yah shall do what? He shall place his law in our inwards. Right? That we shall keep them and do them. That's the correlation right there. That's how Yah will be our light forever. Because he's forever with us. Keeping us grounded and guarded. Not allowing us to go astray like before. This is why Yah has said in the early Genesis, like, it's not good that uh, that he shall not strive with men, right? Because if Yah strives with men, he's going to be lenient all the time. Allow, you know, he's going <laughs> to allow things to allow things to pass and, you know, give show so much mercy. So that's why they continue to live long, long, long. Because Yah was very lenient, striding with men. So then Yah kind of fell back a little bit. And gave men choices. And then their lifespan sh shut down to 120. Because men sin heavenly. Greatly. That's what happens when Yah falls back and don't strive with men. But Yah said he's going to strive with us again. And then what? Then what? Then we shall live in righteousness. Let me fix this right here. I just seen this. My bad father. I was kind of sleepy last night when I wrote this. Okay, let me see. No, let me smile. So I pray she gets the sun will no more be light by day, nor the brightness of the moon will give light to you. But Yah will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will not go down anymore, nor will your moon withdraw itself. For Yah will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning will end. No more sadness, y'all. Then your people will be righteous. They will, they will inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. The work in my hands that I may be glorified. The little one will become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. The remnant, right? That goes into Micah chapter 4. How Yah says he's going to make this remnant, you know, the weak, the weary, the hopeless. He's going to turn them into a mighty nation, strong nation, populate them, make them great, numerous. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. You know, everything is connected. And everlasting light and days and morning. And then your people will be righteous. They will inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting. Okay, my hands that I may be glorified. The little one will become a thousand and the small one a strong nation. Okay. I Yah will do this quickly in its time. Now that's verse twenty two. See now we are in that time of the remnant. So this is why it's important. For this remnant to understand that Isaiah 53 is the instruction manual to go before Yah and give a guilt offering so Yah can move fast, quickly, speedy in our time. Right? 
and delivering us and bringing us back. For Yah, you see, Yah has revived us and awakened us. You know, even though we're on these corners, but a lot of us is talking and speaking. Now, I want to get to this. I just don't want to say. I think I'm going to wait before I talk about that. Because it's something that I want to correct about my wrong that I did and said about a brother and other brothers who were doing this thing. But as I was putting this together and learning, now I see why y'all punished me and got on my head about this. Because this is y'all's doing. It's not about one person. And I get it why y'all was oh, I'm so upset with myself. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to jump into the next subject because it's about time to end this and deal with this. It's perfect. Now, we're talking about the kings of the nations that will speak what they have learned. See, our awakening is starting as startling the world and all the nations learning who the true chosen people of God are. And the arm of Yah will be revealed to them and the nations will begin to learn of their sin. Yes, the nations will understand their sin, even though they will come back bowing to us and they will be servants unto us. But we are righteous people, so they won't be treated with the same vulgar that they gave to us. We're going to treat them and right, do things in righteousness with them. They will be treated with love and respect according to the law and justice of Yah. Not according to man-made deception, being evil, being wicked-rooted. Nah, they're going to be treated differently. So they will learn of their sin because a lot of nations truly, like the descendants of their forefathers, they don't understand what their forefathers truly did and why we are in this predicament among them. You know, they just they just have a, a definition of black people is yeah, they this, the mean people, they like they're killers, they're drug dealers, they're gangsters, they're robbers, they're hoodlums. They don't really understand the the true historic value of why we're like this. But Yah is making it known to their descendants now, and then they will get it. And then they will understand their sin. And then they will learn what they try to say that Hitler did not say. They snatched the chosen jewels of Yah and brought them into captivity. Then they will understand and learn this. Now we're going to read Isaiah 52 verse 13. Verse 15 says, just so he shall startle. See, that's why I put that in there. Just so he, Israel, shall startle many nations. Kings, kings shall be silenced. Because of him, Israel, but they shall see what has not been told them, shall behold what they never have heard. See, Isaiah 53, 1. Who can believe what we have heard? This is the nations talking. Because they're going to speak to one another, but it's pretty sure presented to the world. To the world, you know, because, you know, other nations within the world don't understand us. They just look at us as wicked people, but they're going to speak this. And then that's why it says, who can believe what we have heard? Right? Like, because people ain't going to believe that. They heard about Israel being Yah's true people. Black Israel. The so-called Negroes. Afro-Latins. Right? They have learned that. Oh, they're the chosen people of Yah. They ain't crazy out there on the corners. Oh, they ain't crazy with them Israelite names. All oh, them Jews is the fake Jews. Yeah, they call themselves Jews because they understand that Yah is, is refining true Israel like Jews purging the dross from them so we can be bright, shining ornaments before Yah. So that's why they call themselves Jews and kind of derived it from Judah. But they call themselves Jews because they think they've been refined through that Holocaust uh, situation. Return back, but they still evil, not refined. Not at all. <laughs> but I just want to put that little sidebar in there. But let me see where I was at. Um, okay, okay, Isaiah 53, 1, what can, who can believe what we have heard upon whom has the arm of Yah been revealed? The arm of Yah is going to be revealed to them because they're going to see the deliverance from Yah, delivering Israel. And Yah is going to let it be known that he's going to use you, these nations, because remember, like it says, that. They would be our nursing mothers. We would suck at the breast. We would take their gold, their silver, their bronze and bring it back with us. The wealth of the nations for they took the wealth that our forefathers had. So we're going to get right back the wealth of the nations to bring it back to our land with our children on our backs, 
our women, our family, the old and the young, right? We're turning back with the wealth to redo Israel, to make Israel glorious again, to redo the land, to build this temple, to do all of these things. You know, we need our wealth back so we can sustain as a nation. And then they're going to understand that. Okay, let me see. We all went astray like sheep. Um, okay, Isaiah 53, verse 6. Then it says, before I just go straight into that, these nations will understand that they've been doing their own thing. And once they learn who Israel is, they will see that the punishment should have been towards their wickedness because we inherited the the um the curses from our forefathers which came upon us so we stayed in the iniquity of our forefathers that's still why we're going through what we're going through you know we're just you know we pretty much inherited something so we couldn't turn from it if we wanted to because it was prophecy the curses had to fall upon us because we inherited from our forefathers but these nations would know and come to find out all the wickedness that they've been doing unto Israel all of these years for the past 2,500 years. And they'd be like, dang, Israel endured all this and this guilt should have been put upon us. We deserve the stroke. We deserve the punishment that Israel is going through. So this is why you got Isaiah 53 verse 6 saying, we all went astray like sheep, each going his own way. And God visited upon him, Israel, the guilt of us all. All nations who took part in our captivity and gathering us. See, now I want to get into this segment. See, and I want to talk about how these Jews in the land of Israel is not the true children of Israel because they don't fulfill or keep this part of the a bargain or agreement if they truly return back to their homeland. And they're making, you know, the Demona movement and other people sign certain type of agreements to get citizenship when they weren't supposed to do that they were supposed to voluntarily give us our lot if they if we are a different nation right they say if we are a different nation we're not israel they supposed to give us a lot within their land not make us go through some kind of bargain and sign some kind of citizenship and have to agree to be in the army and all kind of crazy other stuff and make agreements that no more black people from america can return all of this like unnecessary stuff that wasn't that's not supposed to be part of the deal if they are true Israel because true Israel will do this keep this word of yeah and then I'm going to read that's why I put right here this is why some nations would join with us and return to our land with us and become one nation with us because they will understand what Israel had to endure for it was also for their healing it's because we're the lamp right we're the lamp and the light unto yeah Isaiah 53 5 but he was wounded because of our sins crushed because of our iniquities he Israel bore the chastisement that was made he Israel bore the chastisement that made us whole and by his bruises we are healed now this is what I'm talking about the nations will understand that they also have salvation from Israel because we the lamb we the light because not all of them understand what they're doing they inherited the same wealth, the same mind state, the same mental as their forefathers. So they don't truly, truly understand what they're doing. They're just doing it because it's something that's been in formation for years. But those who truly have a contrite heart towards Yah, and they want to turn from that and they want to be forgiven, Yah is a blessing for them. That's why when you go into that Zakaria as well, it says that, you know, they will understand that, that they have inherited lies and they will grab the skirt of an Israelite, says a Jew, but the skirt of an Israelite, and say, we're going to go with y'all. Because we now found out that um, Yah is with you. This is why that's written there in that Sakaria. I should have put that down here, but, um, you know, just go ahead and look that up, you guys. It's in Zakaria, and I believe it's in Zakaria. See, I don't want to just say it's in Zakaria. Uh, you know what? I gotta do it. I can't just, I can't just not look. Grab the skirt. Uh, hey, two. Zakaria. I believe that's Zakaria. Do I know?
what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we just gonna just go through the first one right quick. Zechariah chapter eight verse twenty three. Like it says, this is what Yah Almighty says in those days. Ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Israelite, says Jew, by the hem of his robe and say, let us go with you because we have heard that Yah is with you. Right. So this is what they're going to do because they're going to understand that they inherited lies. Let me see. Is that what it says in the um, KJV? Thus says Yah of hosts in those days, it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that Yah is with you, because they have inherited lies. So when you go back to this right here, right? When you go back to Isaiah 53 verse 5, when they say he bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed, because we are the lamp. And they're going to come up unto us. And then uh, they will learn the truth of Yah. Like what is truly righteousness. What, how they should conduct themselves. They will be think of their iniquity. And Yah will have mercy upon them. For salvation is not just for Israel. Salvation is for all nations who will submit to Yah. And humble themselves before Yah. But as we see, not all nations will. It says... Ten people out of all languages of the earth, right? So pretty much let's just say ten nations out of all the nations in the world will submit themselves unto Yah. And Yah will have mercy upon them. It's like when Abraham asked Yah, if it's only five, Yah, will you spare the city? Ten, Yah, will you spare the city? For ten, Yah, I don't know if that's correct. Thirty, Yah, will you spare the city? And Yah was like, yeah, I will spare it for them sake. If it's just ten, five people, Yah, like, I will spare the whole city for for that ten say because it's not about it's not about the quality of people who come back. It's about the quantity because Yah is going to put the quality in the quantity of people that comes back. Now that's a vision that I had before. A vision I had a while ago. I remember having a vision like Someone stepped on my shoe. I think my sister is like, I ain't gonna say it's my sister, but let's say someone stepped on my shoe and it creased up my shoe. And I was complaining, like, like, look what you did to my shoe. And then they said, Well, um, like what makes your shoe so important or so good or so special? Like it's just a scuff. Like, you know, it's just a crease in it. And then I was like, it's not about it's like it's not about the price of the shoe. Or it's it's you know, it's not about the quality of the shoe. It's about the quantity, right? You know, because my shoe was being referred to the people, right? So even though the people had a crease in it, now I'm just getting more understanding of it, had a crease in it, afflictions, flaws, and wrongs, right? That we have to speak and pray before Yah, right? Our guilt offering. But it's not about that. It's not about, it's not about, so many people being so self-righteous like I wasn't being self-righteous in my dream it's not about being self-righteous before Yah like having all the knowledge and understanding it's about the number of people willing to turn to Yah so he can install the quality unto you so it doesn't matter how what kind of shoe this is it doesn't matter what kind of person it is long as they return to Yah and he will give you the quality that's just a sidebar vision that I had that I'm starting to understand now. And that it's all about the it's all about the quantity for Yah is going to put the quality up in them. That's why it's a remnant. It's all about that remnant of people. For Yah is going to put his spirit, his heart, his law within them. Oh Yah, you beautiful. You deserve all the praise in the world. For you are the King of Kings, God of Gods, Lord of Lords, my Almighty, my Abba. Blessed be you, Almighty Yah. All praise. Before I get too lost and wrapped up in a moment, <laughs> let me get to wrapping up this video. Now, we're dealing with the nations. And like I was saying, how these Jews, if they were truly the Jews, they will fulfill Ezekiel 47, um, verse 22 and 23. Like it says right here, you shall allot, you shall give it as a heritage for yourself and for the strangers 
who reside among you, who have begotten children among you, for other nations who have children among us, right? Then you shall treat them as Israelite citizens. You shall treat them as one, as you. Then it says they shall receive allotments with, along with you among the tribes of Israel. They shall receive a lot. They shall receive a place of inheritance, a place to stay, a place to build, a piece of land. Right? Verse 40, uh, verse 23. You shall give the stranger an allotment within the tribes where he resides, where Israel resides. This declares Yah. So if the Jews were truly the Jews, they wouldn't be making it so difficult for other nations and other people to get citizenship if they want to come and serve Yah. For, for specifically the Demona movement, they came back trying to serve Yah. They are called the kingdom of Yah. I'm not going to go into the other things with them because this ain't what that's about. It's about exalting Yah and putting things in its proper perspective on this topic. So this is how them Jews over there is not true Israel. Because they don't give other nations allotment or inheritance or place to stay if they choose to serve Yah. They make it so hard to convert to Judaism. It's like a big thing if you try to convert to Judaism. You're not really, a, you know. Come on, man. That's not the spirit of Yah. And that's not the prophecy. Now, I'm going to wrap this video up and round out and end it. And stick to the main key point is Israel. Isaiah 53 is talking about Israel. And we must make a guilt offering unto Yah for all of these things to be considered for Yah to redeem us. And for Yah to have mercy and compassion upon us. All Israel won't listen. But I beg and please that will the remnant listen unto Yah. I'd like to end off and say peace, love, and obedience unto the Most High Yah. May Yah be with you. I love you Israel.